Hi, welcome to another video. I'm going to talk about CASCF calculations and how to include in the active space the metal 3D orbitals that we want in cases where one or more of these orbitals cannot be easily found and are not in the active space. So what I'm going to do is use an approach that was taught to me by one of the CASCF ORCA developers and the idea is to separate the calculation into two fragments, one containing only the ligand and the other containing only the metal, and do CASCF calculations on each, and then to merge the wave function files, the GBW files together, in order to get a new a wave function that contains the metal 3D orbitals, which were not mixed with the ligand orbitals and that allows us to retrieve the orbitals that we want and we can use the rotate feature to bring those orbitals into the active space. So here is the molecule, this is a copper corolle. This is part of a project that has just been published in, in organic chemistry. Uh, I'm going to share the paper a little bit in case someone is interested in the contents. Basically I was having problems in getting the correct active space. The copper 3D XY type orbital was nowhere to be found. It was not in the active space and it was also not in any of the occupied orbitals. It was mixed with other ligand orbitals and I wasn't able to recover it. So what I did here is basically split the calculation in three parts. So for example, one of the calculations only contains a copper atom. We can see here in the coordinates, this is just the copper atom in the same position as it was in the complete structure. The other calculation only contains the ligand. See how it doesn't have any protons. The total charge of this ligand is going to be minus three and the total charge of the copper is going to be plus three. So I'm going to do two separate calculations. The coordinates here in this ligand are the same as in the whole complex. I haven't shipped any kind of coordinate. I'm only separating the atoms for pursuing different CASCF calculations. So these are the input files. One input file is only for the copper ion, you can see here. And I'm choosing a charge of three and a multiplicity of three because this is supposed to be copper three, which has two unpaired electrons. And I'm doing a CASCF calculation with eight 3D electrons corresponding to copper three, five orbitals, and I'm choosing a small number of roots, but this is not very important. This is only to get the orbitals of the metal by itself. And the name of the GBW file is going to be the same as the name of the output file. Then I'm doing another CASCF calculation. In here I have the coordinates of the ligand, the charge is minus three, and I'm also choosing a multiplicity of three, but this is not really not really important. And in here I'm choosing four electrons in four orbitals. So this corresponds to the typical Gauterman type orbitals in, in corolles and also in porphyrins. So this is like a minimal active space for a, a corolle. This is probably not the most accurate calculation that I can do with a corolle, but it doesn't matter. I just want to get the orbitals. And after I get the output files from each of these calculations, I am going to do a third calculation. But first, I'm going to use this command. I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm going to connect to the cluster, to the folder that, that I use. And here I'm calling the Orca utility called Orca merge frag. And I am putting the copper calculation GBW file. Then I am putting the corolle GBW file. And the last name is the a name that I'm going to give to the merge GBW file. So this is going to put basically the orbitals of the copper on top of the orbitals of the corolle. So basically I did this in the command line. This is not part of the input file. This is why it is commented. But after I did this, I copied the GBW file into the same folder that I'm going to run this calculation in. So then I'm using more read and I'm going to input the merged GBW file into the calculation. But this is only for seeing how the orbitals look. So I'm choosing max equal one. 
So I'm not going to optimize. I want to see where the orbitals are, how the orbitals are ordered. And I'm going to choose 12 electrons in nine orbitals. Basically, I'm adding the active spaces of the copper and the ligand. So, and now these are the coordinates in which I have the copper and the ligand. So after I run this calculation and I get an output file, I'm opening this in ChemCraft. So this is the corolle as the same structure as before. And I'm looking at the active space that contains nine orbitals. So basically these orbitals are corolle based orbitals. They don't contain any kind of copper character because I still have not re-optimized the wave function. I haven't done a full cast calculation. So if we look at the different orbitals, some of them may look familiar to someone who works with corals or porphyrins, but they are essentially ligand orbitals. None of these, the ones that I normally would put in the active space. This is a HOMO-1 Gauterman orbital. This is a nitrophenyl based orbital. It's chemically correct, but it's not one of the Gauterman orbitals. And this is the other, and this is a, another of the Gauterman orbitals, which I want. But still, I don't have here the metal orbitals. So if I look at the orbitals above the active space, these are virtual orbitals. So what I want to do is see where the uh, metal the orbitals are. So these are going to be ordered on top of the files. Orbitals 1 to 30 something are going to be metal orbitals. So I'm going to render molecular orbitals from 1, 2, 3 until maybe uh, 15. So this is going to take a little while. So I want to say again that basically the active space contains nine orbitals. It goes from orbital 182 in orca notation to 190 in orca notation. So Kencraft starts from one, orca starts from zero. When I rotate the metal orbitals into the active space, I have to be careful with this. So now this is finished, I'm going to show the different copper based orbitals. So if we look here, the orbital number zero in orbital notation, we cannot see it. This is because probably it's a very internal orbital. So here I need to reduce the ISO value a lot in order to be able to see it. It's a very internal orbital in the copper. So if I go to number two, I start seeing them three. These are orbitals near the nucleus. If I go here, I start seeing different orbitals. So for example, this is probably the 3s orbital. This is a, okay, 3p, you can see them here. And this should be the d orbitals, and you can clearly see them. And they are rotated in an arbitrary direction because basically the copper was alone. So it doesn't really know which direction is x, y, and z. So perhaps, for future reference, it could be useful to put some point charges around the metal. So basically to define a coordinate system, a molecular coordinate system where the metal, the orbitals can be better aligned. So I could perhaps put four negative charges in the copper calculation in the positions of the nitrogens. That would make it uh, more realistic. So basically what I'm seeing here is that I have the five D orbitals that I needed. So these go from orbital 9 to 13 in orca notation. So then I go to the fourth CASCF file in which I am reading the wave function file as before. It is the same, but now I am going to basically optimize the orbitals again. I'm choosing more routes, but basically the active space is the same as before. And I'm rotating the orbitals that go from 9 to 13 which are the metal 3D orbitals into the first five orbitals in the active space. Remember that my active space went from 182 until 190 in zero based indexing using ORC. Basically that will give me the 5D orbitals in the active space plus four orbitals that contain the Gauterman orbitals and also contain others. So the result of this calculation is going to be the one with code MJD. I now open the MJD output file. Now I can render again the molecular orbitals in the new active space. Once again, they go from 182 until 190, but hopefully they will be the correct orbitals.
So here we have the orbitals which have now been optimized. So we see that we have the DZ square copper orbital and we have the different orbitals. They have changed from the previous one. This is a mixed orbital. It's not a DZ square, but it's a mixture. But essentially we have five D orbitals. The DX square minus Y square is the one that is aligned along the copper nitrogen bonds. And the other orbitals are now the Gauterman orbitals. Basically, Orca optimized and put the correct orbitals in the active space. So this is not the largest active space that we can use for this uh, copper coral. We can make it larger to include the nitrophenyl orbitals, which are very important for the UVB spectra. But essentially, I just wanted to show how to split a complicated complex into two fragments. That fragment can be the metal and the ligand, but maybe it can be a metal and some of the ligands and other ligands calculated separately. For example, if we have apical ligands like carbon monoxide or uh, cyanide or something else or chloride, we could maybe calculate the metal chloride or the metal carbonyl fragment by itself and the rest of the larger aromatic ligand like a corolla porphyrin a phenylene diamine based ligand any kind of complicated non-innocent organic ligand can be calculated separately from a smaller metal ligand fragment and that can really help us to get all the proper orbitals into the active space but we always need to check visually the orbitals and be very careful with what we do so i'm going to show now a little bit of the paper so this has been published uh, in November in, in Organic Chemistry. If you are interested in this work, this is about electronic structure and hypercorol features. That is basically corol to aryl uh, based uh, UVBs near absorptions on deprotonated free base and reduced copper corals. And besides the experimental part, we can see here these are the active spaces for different corals in their neutral form. And we have here the five copper 3D orbitals. We have the Gauterman orbitals. And we also include in the active space in some of the calculations these nitrophenyl based orbitals. Only here these are four methyl carboxyphenyl orbitals, which are also important. And we show through calculations of the UVB spectra that we need to include the uh, mesoaryl orbitals like nitrophenyl or methyl carboxyphenyl orbitals in the active space to reproduce some of the spectroscopic features. So this is all for this video. Hope you find the method that I showed how to do uh, useful. This is basically just applying advice from the ORCA developers. So I want to thank and give credit to them, especially Kandine. And thank you for watching. See you next time.